It's long overdue. Um, I last talked about it in December, so long overdue. We need to talk about laundry sheets. I've gotten a lot of comments recently on that same video about like, oh, well, have you seen Shelby's re review, Shelby's follow-up? And we don't know, Shelby from Shelbizzle, she's like the zero waste YouTuber. And she's become quite the authority on a lot of things, respectfully so. She's been doing this eco YouTubing for a long time. And as she so often mentions, she has her degree in environmental science. I don't know, maybe I'm just a skeptic. Maybe I don't trust anybody that I see online and you should too. Just because I say something doesn't mean you should take it as fact. I try to as often as I can encourage you to do your own research. I'll leave my sources if you want to deep dive into the resources that I used. All this to say, we need to talk about laundry sheets again. Was I wrong? Do my thoughts change after I watched her video? And what are my thoughts on her video? Let's discuss. I do not have a degree in environmental science, but I do research. And I think anybody can be a scientist if you do research. Um, that might be a bold claim. I stand by it. <laughs> Number two, I scripted this entire video. Guess where that script is? Las Vegas. That's where I am. Spokane. I'm in Eastern Washington. I scripted that whole video and I loved that script so much. It was so good. It's on my work computer. I did it at work um, because my last job was so easy. I needed something to fill my free time. So I wrote scripts um, and then I didn't send it to myself. I can't find it anywhere. I've looked everywhere. Maybe I'll look one more time just before we actually get into it. But honestly, I think this format will be a little bit more fun anyway. So what we're going to do today, because I don't have my script, is I'm going to go back through and just watch Shelby's video and make the comments on it that I had originally commented like in that word doc. And here's the thing, we're gonna, we're gonna just jump right off the bat. I don't change my mind. I still stand by what I said. The biggest thing I remember from her video is being like, the only source that is saying this is this one biased source. And we all know the biased source is Blue Land, which I don't disagree with. That source is very biased. But all of the research that I cited in my video, none of it was Blue Land because I knew it was biased. I'm like, I need to find an unbiased source to prove whatever needs to be proven. And so I used other sources that were not biased, that were scientific. And that's how I came to my conclusions, which is why I stand by them. That right off the bat annoyed me, especially because people who watched her video came back to my video and was like, oh my gosh, did you see Shelby's video? Did you change your mind? No because my sources aren't biased sources. And again, it's all just, it's all a preference, right? Like if you still wanna use laundry sheets, you personally think that your septic system can handle it, that's fine. I don't think mine can, which is why I'm not using them. I guess I really jumped ahead of myself. If you guys have not heard, laundry sheets contain plastic. Yeah, these guys right here. They contain a hidden plastic called PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, which is not hidden. It's right there on the ingredients list, but all these brands are like, we're plastic free, we're plastic free, we're plastic free but they're not. They're so blatantly not plastic free, which is why it's greenwashing. Does the product work? Yes. Will it maybe dissolve and not create microplastics in your personal situation? Perhaps. But the fact is still coming from these companies lied. They are all saying we're plastic free. Some of them too, in that first video I made, go watch it. When I asked them, do your laundry sheets contain plastic? They straight up said no. So like they're actively lying about this. Um, which is really what made me mad. Like, so if you want to use them, fine. Just know that they're greenwashing. The other thing, before we even jump in, that really, really bothered me about her video, zero sources, none. Even now, I called her out on it. Maybe not called her out. I just mentioned it because even in her video, she's like, go read my sources down below. She didn't leave any sources. So I can't even fact check if the sources she's citing are scientific, are legit, are not biased, which that's just what really blows my mind out this whole thing because this entire 30 minute video about environmental propaganda is talking about how people need to do the research people need to believe the science blah 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 blah. i agree but you need to leave the science for us to read let me see if she even replied to my comment because i remember commenting like hey great video i'd love to learn more but like where are your sources okay i've searched for myself no way oh my gosh okay there's almost 500 comments I don't know if I can search through all of them, but so far I keep scrolling and scrolling. I can't find my comment. I have had friends in the past say that they have commented on her videos, lightly saying things like, Hey, where are your sources? Hey, why are you being sponsored by plastic companies? And she deletes the comments. Like I'm just stating things as they are. Oh, did we get one? Oh, Hey, I can't find my comment, but somebody probably one of you commented about me. 
Um, they said, Shelby, thank you so much for addressing the PVA thing. When Emma, me, did a video about it recently, it left me with so many questions and I knew I could just, oh, trust you to bring us the actual scientific answers. Um, sorry, Allison, if you're watching this, I hate to break it to you. We didn't leave her sources. So again, like she might be the authority, she might be an environmental scientist, but I personally can't trust someone's word if they're just spewing stuff, if they don't leave their sources. I don't care if their sources are scientific and credible and like the best sources ever. If you don't leave them to cite your proof, to cite your evidence, I can't trust it. And again, in my video, I can't tell you how many times I said it even in that video, I did research outside of biased sources. I purposely sought out credible sources and left them there. Hey, I'm editing. I want to add one more thing. In my original video, I went in trying to disprove these claims. I did not want laundry sheets to contain plastic and be greenwashing because I love them. I still do love them. I think they are a great product. So like, if anything, I was biased the other way around. So like, you would have thought, had I picked biased sources, I would have used them to make the confirmation bias come true and that PVA is fine, laundry sheets are fine. But the research that I found was the opposite of my bias. So I just wanted to clear the air there that I didn't purposely seek out sources for my confirmation bias. I, I sought out sources that I thought were credible and scientific and I ended up changing my mind because of the science, so. This is what I was wondering too. Someone commented, I'm confused about your scientist title. Do you still have your old job or are you just referring to yourself that way because of your degree? That's a really good question. Can you call yourself an environmental scientist, a scientist, if you just have a degree? If you're not practicing science? Sure, if you have a doctorate, doctorate degree, like in medical doctoring, you are a medical doctor whether you're practicing or not. But like, I don't know. I don't go around calling myself a linguist just because I have a degree in linguistics. I, I was a secretary and now I work in a state park. Like, I'm actively not a linguist. This is the end of the comments. I don't think my comments in here. This person comments, what makes one a scientist or an expert in something? And I think that's a really great, genuine question. And Shelby actually replied to this one. A degree, active research, 10 plus years of experience. So I was right, doing active research, which I did for my video and I'm still doing, makes me a scientist. Anyway, we are at the very end of the 500 comments. Let's see if mine pops up. Nope. She deleted my comment. I did comment, I promise. I'm not making that up. And it wasn't anything like calling her out. In fact, I agreed with her on a lot of things. I was like, oh, really cool. Thanks for bringing the, the thing to light about the thanks period underwear. Cause that was like a big thing too, is everybody's like, oh my gosh, things are toxic. They're gonna give you cancer or something. And I'm like, oh cool. Good to know that that was actually biased research as well. But also where are your sources? Comments gone. Good God. Okay, well, that's very disappointing. It just bothers me so much. You can't call yourself a scientist and then not cite your sources. At least I cited my sources. I don't have a degree in environmental science. I think that rhetoric too, this is just gonna be a rant video. That rhetoric too about how like being an environmental scientist makes you like the best of the best. But like, it's really just discrediting those of us who are learning for ourselves, like who don't want a degree, can't get a degree, like can't afford it, don't have time to get a degree, but we're educating ourselves anyway. Those of us who don't have degrees can still be considered experts based off of experience, which I'm glad she she mentioned later on, but I kid you not, that was the 500th comment way at the bottom. Nobody is out there reading that. I think she probably could have could have said that in the video about what makes someone a scientist. I'm just still so mind blown, there's no sources. It could have gotten deleted on its own. I will give her a little benefit of the doubt because that happens to me a lot. People are like, why did you delete my comment? And I'm like, I didn't. YouTube does do that sometimes. It's possible that it happened. I, I don't want to just be out here completely blaming somebody for things that I don't know. But like, why? Why would you delete a comment? I'm just simply asking where your sources are. Maybe I'll ask again. I'll ask under Dan's profile because I think she hates me actually. And I'm just going to leave a, a simple answer this time. I'm just curious where your sources are. Because it should be as simple as plunk to my comment being like, oh, hey, sorry, I totally forgot. Because like the other day someone was like, hey, you forgot to put something in your description. I'm like, hey, cool, thanks. I'm going to add it right now. I'm, I've been a little biased against her for a while because as I hinted at earlier, she did a sponsorship with a plastic company a year or two ago. And after that, I'm like, girl, I don't know if I can trust you. And so I am a little biased about her content now, but I did go into this one with an open mind. I'm like, maybe I'll learn something. Maybe I'll learn something. And again, I did. I did learn something about the, the thanks period underwear. And honestly, I learned something about PVA too. I learned some things as we'll go as we'll go through this. But it's just the fact that she didn't cite her sources that's really throwing me off. This, this is what I was missing. 
Here you go. I've used for years because they are the less wasteful alternative to plastic jugs. Yes, they are, but they're not the least wasteful. And I got so many comments on my own video about that. Like, oh, so you're saying I need to go back to Tide? No, I never said that. Big companies use toxic ingredients and they're in typically non-recyclable plastic jugs. They are terrible. I'm not saying to go back to those. I'm saying there are better options than opting for these hidden plastic laundry sheets that are then releasing microplastics. And I think this is something important too, as a scientist, you need nuance and caveats. I talked about this a lot in my natural gas video is that natural gas is a good source of energy for a fossil fuel. People forget that caveat a lot. And like, same with this, people are forgetting that caveat a lot. It's like, oh, laundry sheets are better compared to the most wasteful brands. They're not the best. And that's what I think people are mixing up on all sides. I never said this in my video either. I'm not saying that they're unsustainable. I'm just saying they're not the most sustainable. And I think that's a key factor that nobody's mentioning. In any brand can write the word biodegradable on their packaging. That is a fair point. Always be weary of the term biodegradable because it's not regulated. And maybe this is because I'm a linguist. <laughs> and maybe this is because of my background working as an intelligence analyst. I analyze words and what she said, it's the safer ingredient. That doesn't mean it's safe. That doesn't mean it's the best ingredient. And this is what it all comes down to. If we can avoid PVA, why would we not just avoid it? If that's your only choice, sure. The EPA says it's fine, but if, but why not just opt to not use it if I can? To microplastics. So that's basically, the, the case was closed. And this was where the case was closed for me as well. I'm like, oh, that's great news. I was wrong and I need to issue an apology video. But she keeps going, I think. I mean, there's 10 minutes left. For me, right? And this is the chart that you have to meet to be on their safer choices list. And PVA is on that. It all comes back to the safer choices list. Why would we, why would we not strive to find the best choice? Why would we just stick to a middle choice? Bio 28 days, as well as be less than 10 parts per million. So it can still be up to 9.9 .9 parts per million polluting and still be considered biodegradable. And like the thing is too, I'm, I'm still so caught up on these sources. And again, I think it just comes back to my, to my background as a linguist and an Intel analyst. Why not even just put www.epa.gov in your bio, in your description, in your comments? At least that's a source to break down these things. So PVA requires certain types of microbes to break it down. And that I'm glad she touched on it because that's what I touched on in my video. And that was ultimately my deciding factor in Vegas in a big wastewater treatment plant, a big city. I, my wastewater treatment plant probably had those microbes. If you live in a single home with your own septic tank, unless you're the one physically adding those specific microbes yourself, which I don't even know how you obtain those PVA won't be broken down because it needs these specific microbes. And now I'm living in an RV park. I don't know. And I can't guarantee that my water here will have those specific microbes to break down PVA. So I just personally don't feel comfortable. And I even said that in my video was if you feel confident that your septic system, your wastewater treatment plant has the capabilities to break these down, go for it. But I don't want to put my trust in that. And it's just the same with like, just trusting the recycling system works, just trusting that the government's going to take care of climate change. <laughs> You can't. So you have to take matters into your own hands. And when there are, when there are better options, why would I not use them? Why would I stick to PVA if PVA might not be actually biodegrading where I live? PVA breaks down to carbon dioxide and water when the certain appropriate microbes are present. There are 55 different microbes um, that are able to break down PVA. And according to the study that I read, and I'll, I'll link below for you. She didn't. She didn't link the study. Every wastewater treatment plant in every like major city has the ability to do this. There are still so many caveats to that, right? Like nearly every wastewater treatment plant in nearly every major city. I think this is what makes me a good scientist, a good researcher is because I'm a good analyst. Thanks to the Air Force for something. The, the language here is stating that it's not everywhere. And I mean, that's very clear to everybody, but like it has to be a major city and even in major cities, it might only be some of them.
So there's no way to guarantee unless you're like, okay, well, here's my zip code. I found my wastewater treatment plant for this zip code. Let me give them a call. Hey, do you have a list of these 55 microbes that will break down PVA? It's just so much work. If you want to, fine. If you live in a big enough city, like I felt pretty confident in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a huge city. Not eco at all. So not sure on that front, but like it all comes on the personal preference. I, I live in a smaller place now. I'm not sure about this anymore. There's not a publicized list somewhere of like which microbes are East Wage Water Treatment Plant. Exactly. So why would you put your trust in that? Because because what it comes down to is if the one of those 55 microbes, it, it might be more than 55, like it might have to be a combination. I don't know. But if you have one of those 55 microbes, it turns into carbon dioxide. But if it's not, it's microplastics. It is microplastics. And because she even said that herself, they only break down under these very specific circumstances. And because there's no publicized list of where PVA breaking down microbes are, how am I supposed to know which areas are safe and which are not? Why would I be purposefully risking releasing microplastics into the environment if I don't have to? And that's what it comes down to. If you have an option, a better option, which we'll talk about later, why would you keep using them? Why? It's a little hard to make like this sweeping uh, claim that- uh, But she did. Um, she did do that. She does do that in this video. She does say laundry sheets and laundry pods are the best. But according to the EPA, it is biodegradable. I think Under those circumstances that you just listed. Okay, I'll give you the cliff notes. Basically, she says there's different layers of filtering and at the very end is filtering for microbes and that's where the PVA comes in. If one of those 55 microbes is available, it will be filtered out with them and that's when it's broken down and biodegraded. But again, she keeps saying herself, if, 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 if all this is met, I'm like, how can you be so confident to say that PVA is good when there's so many ifs, ands, or buts? If there's not one of these 55 microbes, that's where PVA would not be able to be filtered out because it's so small um, and end up in our waterways this like misinformation was funded by one of the top brands in clean yes this one article was funded by a competitor who doesn't use pva it was biased but the rest of the science on the internet was not and is not biased is that's what, that's what i mean and that's where i can agree and disagree i agree it is disappointing that they did that but i can't but i have to disagree on the fact that this whole, this whole, because the EPA says it, it's true. Don't, don't click away yet. I agree with that. If the EPA says something, it probably is true because they are the authority. But again, the EPA themselves have these caveats that she herself is saying. And granted, Blue Land probably isn't talking about these caveats either. I think it's a problem from both sides. Nobody, they're pointing fingers at each other. It's a Spider-Man meme and nobody's including the whole story in any of their articles or whatever except for the EPA. The EPA is doing it just fine. So that's what's frustrating is everybody's just getting worked up because nobody's including the full picture. Not using PVA, if you're using like regular old laundry detergent that has a ton of non-biodegradable ingredients in it. Yeah, this all comes down to as well, people thinking it's one or the other. You have to use Tide. That's absolutely terrible for the environment or you have to use these laundry sheets when there are other options. Tide and Gain and all these other big ones have more than one non-biodegradable ingredient, but so do laundry sheets. It might just be one non-biodegradable ingredient unless it's under very specific um, circumstances, but there's still one that doesn't biodegrade. And that's enough for me to not want to use it personally. Um, so I do like here that she's talking about that PVA might be a problem if you do have an individual septic tank, which is important and probably should have been talked about before minute 26, but I'm glad we got to it eventually. Not under those conditions, we don't have solid evidence on what happens to it in those cases. Doesn't mean that it's not problematic. For some people in some areas without those microbes, okay. it may be problematic. Okay. But for this still derived from oil. I do like that she talks about that. Even if you live in a big city and your big city just so happens to use these specific microbes, it's still a problem that this is an oil byproduct, that it's a pollutive thing to create even if it's not a pollutive thing to dispose of. But yeah, I think that's really important that she talks about that. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, there have been a few brands recently that have started to create 
plant-based PVA, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'd like to look into that more. Other than that, there are some powders that don't have PVA in them. The only thing is that our laundry machine says not to use powder detergents, that it can like get stuck, I guess, within the barrel or something. And I've heard that a lot of high efficiency washer dryers don't want you to use powders either. I didn't notice this the first time. She's making this claim on powders because of her personal laundry machine. She said my laundry, I, mean, I don't think she said my, our something. Our laundry machine can't use powders. Okay, cool. Don't rule it out for everybody else. And then she says, I've heard, I've heard that a lot of high efficiency machines can't handle powders. But again, no research, no sources listed. And it sounds like it's, she just heard it as a rumor. It didn't, she didn't say like, oh, I read on EPA.gov as she did earlier, a legitimate source that AG machines can't handle powder laundry sheet that I found that didn't have PVA in it. Let me see what they're- There are a couple more now since this video has come out because like because of this hot debate this has been a very big topic of an interest for a lot of brands but they are all expensive as she's just about to say. The price doesn't look that insane to me. It's 44 cents per load. Let me just look up Tide I guess just for comparison. Tide cost per load. 22 cents per load. So it is double the cost of Tide but let's see, she's a big drops proponent. Let's look up drops cost per load. 38 cents per load for drops. So six cents more per load for this brand that doesn't use PVA. And she even puts it right on her screen. The screenshot that says 44 cents per load. It's not that much more expensive than drops, girly. I mean, I agree. I'm not saying that it's good that it's a little bit more expensive. I think this just contributes to what a lot of people think is that zero waste is expensive and you can't be zero waste if you're on a budget or you just simply don't have money. So that is a problem. So those are the three topics of like greenwashing propaganda. All right. Oh, I shouldn't have closed that. Um, that brings us to a close on the commentary on her video. That was long. I didn't realize she talked about that for 13 minutes. At the end of the day, I stand by my original research. It's not biased research. The, the articles are not biased. And again, I said it in that video too, I went into it with an open mind because I love laundry sheets. I'm like, I would really, really love if these were truly eco-friendly because I wanna keep using them. I went into her video with an open mind, but I just can't get behind that she touches on all this nuance herself. And then at the end of the day is like, yeah, but it's still fine. Despite all these caveats and then the not, not listing sources, that was really the, the last straw for me. Especially when it comes to powders when she just makes this very vague claim that my personal laundry machine can't handle powder so nobody should use powder powder doesn't contain pva um you can probably find one that has really good ingredients isn't just some run-of-the-mill not good brand comes in cardboard let's i'm gonna look it up right now on the spot because <laughs> my script is gone i guess laundry detergent powder he machines the first thing I see is a lot of powdered laundry detergents that are formulated for HE machines. Just use one of those. If you have an HE machine, use HE laundry detergent. And that goes for anything. Whether you're using a liquid, a pod, or a sheet, or a powder, you need the laundry detergent that matches your machine. So it's going to mess up your machine no matter what if you're not using HE detergent. This is from aspenclean.com. HE washing machines work with both laundry pods, powders, and liquid detergents as long as they're HE friendly. And if you notice a personal issue with powders fine stop using them but don't say that nobody should be using powders i'll do some research and leave a quick list of brands right here on the screen for you i don't want to research right now and waste your time um so here's a quick list of brands that are eco-friendly and a powder and he machine efficient um they'll all be linked down below as well i'm not affiliated with any of them these are just what i quickly found doing a quick google search just to prove a point that you can use powder that comes in just as eco-friendly of packaging great ingredients, no PVA, and it's still fine for your HE machine. So that's what I'm going to be using probably um, after I run out of all the stuff that I'm currently using. I'm still using laundry sheets because I'm still, I'm not going to throw them away. I said that in my video I made in December. It's more wasteful to throw them away than to just use a product I already have and hope for the best. And then just like with any greenwashing situation, the thing you can do is just move forward. Educate yourself, don't beat yourself up over it, and just move forward. Do you think that I'm still being biased? Like, do you think that I should be giving PVA a chance? I don't think so, honestly. <laughs> it's it's only my personal opinion and it's your personal choice as well. If it works for you, if you feel confident that it will biodegrade, go for it. I don't wanna put my trust in it when there are better options out there. Let me see if I can go find this comment. 
Cat the Fruit Bat. Great name, Cat. Um, they say, I, I totally agree and I made my points, I think, in both of my videos now about this. Um, they say, I think it's problematic to solely rely on the wastewater treatment process to biodegrade things because there are too many ways wastewater can be released into the environment without any treatment. That's so true. Just like an oil spill, wastewater can leak. It leaks often at the campground I work at. Yeah, there can be spills. Also, examples include bypassing untreated wastewater to avoid damage from high flow during snowmelt or rain. <gasps> That's so true. There are cracks in the aging sewer system infrastructure that leak both untreated wastewater and treated drinking water. And there are also issues with septic systems, not knowing whether or not they can properly biodegrade something like PVA and the fact that they can overflow, have issues that cause untreated wastewater to be released into the ground and pollute groundwater and or nearby waterways. And yeah, I agree. Shelby didn't reply to their comment either. They say again, I no longer remember the points she made and that's probably because they were so peripheral to the problem. I do remember how many times she mentioned that she's an environmental scientist. This person also has a degree in environmental science and if there's one, th one overreaching thing that any branch of science teaches, it's to never stop asking questions. And unfortunately, it didn't seem like she asked many questions before making that video. I cannot agree more. So thank you, Kat, for your additional commentary because those were points that I wish I had made and thank you for making them. <laughs> I, I really do want to know though what your initial thoughts to Shelby's video was because there was so much praise for that video and like granted some points were valid some points were fine but like I'm specifically wondering about your points on the laundry detergent portion if you haven't seen it you can go watch it if you want to but you might be a little biased now at this point after have watching this um but again if I'm if I'm reaching too far if I'm being biased if I'm being mean let me know but I don't think I am if you're a scientist, cite your sources. Case in point, that's my update on laundry sheets. I stand by my original research and I stand by not wanting to put my full trust in the water treatment system. If there are better options out there, and there are. Obviously, nobody go back to Tide. I can't believe people thought I wanted you to do that in my original video. Don't do that. But why would you stop here? Why would you only go one step better? I mean, it's probably several steps better to go to laundry sheets when you could go more steps farther, that's probably cheaper and just use powder. And again, I'm not being paid by anybody to say this. Like this is my own personal opinion on zero waste on a budget and to be the most eco-friendly that you possibly can. This was a long one. Thank you so much for paying attention all the way to the end. I would love to hear your thoughts. Denahi's snoring. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. If you found any value in it, enjoyed it, whatever, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, let me know why. And feel free to leave a thumbs down if that's how you feel. So yeah, let me know if you like this video, like the commentary style, because I can, I like doing research, but I don't have time to research right now. And doing stuff like this commentary is just a lot easier for the time being until I can make this my full-time job. Yeah, so let me know. Um, and again, thank you for watching. You can check out my laundry review videos from the past if you're looking for some inspiration for laundry reviews, though there are a laundry sh lot of laundry sheets in those reviews. So I need to make an updated one with some actually eco-friendly options. But yeah, I think all my points have finally been made. Like an hour later. I'm gonna go back to go get some coffee now because I have two more videos to film today. Thank you for watching. I will see you in next week's video. Until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye guys. Goodness gracious. Whoa, it got really bright.